Our girl, Amber Bowles from Married at First Sight, season nine is on. Amber! Ah! <laughs> Amber, I was just telling you before we started this interview that you have been, you and Matt were one of the most interesting couples to watch. I mean, and I I don't even know what to say because at first I said to you a love story, but you and I were like, uh, what kind of love story is this? (laughs) Um, I would say that we had more of like, um, it was like a fake love story. It started out like really strong for like the first three days and then. The first three days. And it crashed. We were driving this love car and it crashed real quick. (laughs) Major crash. Okay, wait, Amber. So, in you know, you kind of got us into Married at First Sight. We've been fair weather fans, but we got into your story. And my understanding with Married at First Sight is they do, this is supposed to be science, right? Like you've got a sociologist that screens you two before. You've got like a spirituality person. Tell us about the screening of how they put you and Matt together. So the screening is so intense. So you do multiple psych evaluations. You do a seven hour long questionnaire where you really like get into what you want. Sex, like family, love, money, um, future, children. Like you talk about everything. And it's like paragraph questions. Like you're writing essays. It's not like... I don't know why anyone would do this process uh, just to get on that show because it is the hardest process ever. And then you interview multiple times in person. They come to your house multiple times. Check out wow. everything. Like Dr. Pepper goes in your underwear drawer. Like if you what? Yes, she's like she's famous for looking at the underwear. <laughs> why? I wonder why. Maybe she's oh, looking for sex toys. God. Oh, right. Maybe underwear has like personality. Like she can kind of see, like, oh, you're like a boy shorts girl. Wait, you're like- <laughs> what does it say if they have holes in them? Like, what would that say about my personality? You are busy woman because you haven't Thank had time to. <laughs> Busy woman. Yeah. And Sarah, what are they box? Are they box shorts? Are they grandma panties? Or are they thongs? Well, actually, see, I'm wondering what she would rate about my personality because I do have some thongs. You know, I got married last summer. They bought me all all my girls. AJ, my girls bought me all this scandalous lingerie. Right. But then that's next to the undies with like holes. And, you know, the entire like string is coming up. I don't know what she'd say. Multiple personalities, I guess. She would say that you're you're a good time. Either way. <laughs> yeah. Right. Accurate. Accurate. So you, you go through months of screening. So does Matt. So you're right. Like you're you're in this, Amber, when you signed up to actually find true love. That was your hope. Right. I um, went through the process because one, like I've always been one of those people who dated like shitty guys. So uh, like, I feel like there's a lot of women like me out there. Um, I just have always had a bad picker. I'm like, oh, he's emotionally unavailable. Hot. Like, it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I was like, okay, so this show can't get it wrong. Like, whatever guy is going to do this whole freaking process, he's in it to win it. So I don't have any worries. And then, like, I learned my lesson. Like, I leveled up. Like, I went from like typical douchebag to like narcissist sociopath. <laughs> it's like an actual registered douchebag. <laughs> Yes, like I leveled up to the next level. Like I think I made it to like level 100 on the douchebag scale. I mean, were you furious at the doctors and the show behind this? After you start dating Matt, you get married, you know, your honeymoon night. And by the way, you guys didn't have sex, right? On your first night together? No, no, no. You're so good. I mean, because he was hot on that show. I mean, were you trying to get in his pants? I would have been like, look. Well, I wanted to kiss him to see if there was chemistry. So I was like, because I'm one of those people, I'm like, I'm a Libra, and I don't. A lot of people don't believe in that, but I do. Um, I'm a Libra, so I'm like maybe, maybe. So I need to kiss and like get that chemistry before right. I can make a decision. Um, so that's why I was like, all right, we need to kiss like one more time because I can't tell if there's chemistry or not. Wait, um, well, at the wedding, I mean, you were all over him, and then the post wedding interview, you're like, I can't keep my hands off of him. He's so sexy, and I was like, I yeah, agree. I was drinking, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was alcohol. I was like um, a few champagnes in and like uh, we had opened a bottle and both finished it like within the 10 minutes because we were both so nervous. Oh my um, God. So I, and I'm like one of those people, I'm like super touchy feely when I'm drinking, but then after I'm like, mm, I probably wasn't that into it. <laughs> <laughs> I am the same. 
But what did you do? You think they put you guys together because they really knew you were opposite and they knew you'd make good television? Or did you go to the producers at one point and go, look, this is my life. Like, why the fuck would you put me with this guy who, you know, I thought very obvious from the beginning was like not that nice to you, obviously started cheating on you. I mean, what it was your take? So I, I asked my producer, I sat down, I'm like, why would you even use him for the show, much less for me? Um, and they were like, honestly, he fooled us all. So oh, wow. he, was with people, he kept saying, like, I really am craving stability in my life. I want someone who's going to be stable and who's going to be committed to this process. And so, I mean, I'm a teacher. Like, I would say I'm pretty stable financially. Um, so I felt like they thought that I would offer him and that's what he needed because he was a very like homeless lifestyle. I'm not going to be nice about it. He, he um, lives on his friend's couch um, and he's lived on his friend's couch since January of 2019. Um, Is so, this while he's waiting to get picked up by a basketball league? Well, I mean, he's on and off been in uh, Mexican basketball leagues. Right. But like, I think his, like he hasn't made enough income to file taxes. Like he's just. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, like he's financially very unstable. He claims he's going to start a business and he has never started it. So I think that was also like, um, he told the show that, hey, like I'm about to start this awesome business opportunity that's going to be so successful just to get chosen. Like, hey, I'm not completely homeless and jobless. He or the show. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because um, as soon as the show was over, he like scrapped that um, business idea. But he was also a really good talker. He would tell me on a daily basis, like, I think we're meant to be together. Um, I remember wow. one point he looked at me. He was in the kitchen. He was like, I see why they matched us. And I'm like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the reality was you guys were already married, right? So you've got to try oh, to figure it out. Legally married. We, go to the, we went to the courthouse. Um, so the day after the wedding, you go to the courthouse the next morning at, like, an ungodly early hour. And you get married. So I feel like you're, like, half asleep. And you're like, Am I really doing this? And you, right. yeah, you actually go to the courthouse too. Wow. And okay, so what is the status? We obviously watched your interview on Kevin Frazier, you know, when they were they had like the papers backstage. I actually I have to say, first of all, Matt looks like he's gone downhill. I mean, you know, he was hot as hell on the show. I was like, all right, you know what? I would have been trying to get in his pants that night. Absolutely. Work out or not, right? Like, he just it was smoking hot. Then when you guys sat down for the Married at First Sight sort of like catch up with Kevin Frazier, he looked like, he did look homeless. He looked like a yeah. mess. Wouldn't sign the papers. I do have to say, I thought it was somewhat smart of him. Maybe you have an attorney. Not that you were trying to pull the wool out over his eyes, but you should right. always, you know, have somebody look over things but what is, so has he signed are you guys divorced yeah what? no so my hope was that by making that happen he would at least be like say hey amber let's go off stage let's look at these papers it's only right. a one page and a quarter of reading um and we actually have the same lawyer the our lawyers are from the show so they're representing both of us oh. so the, from my lawyer it was from our lawyers but he's choosing to have his lawyers, like his specific lawyers, which, I mean, he has a best friend that went to law school. Like he doesn't have a lawyer. Um, (laughs) Isn't it so funny how he just wants to say his lawyer? Like, oh, your best friend, you know, since elementary school that went to law school, I know him. Oh Oh my God. So wait, why won't he sign? What is the update? Why won't he sign? He has yet to sign. And at this point, I don't need a signature because I'm getting an absolute divorce. So in the state of North Carolina, if your spouse is like not present, which he isn't, um, then I can get a divorce without his signature. Um, but I think he's not signing out of spite and laziness. Like, I think it's a mix of both. Like, at first it was out of spite. And then he's truly like, just one of those, I think he was paid for a notary. So he probably didn't want to pay $7 for a notary. Um, <laughs> like, and lazy. And you, he has to like leave his partying in his house like or his friend's apartment um to go get it and i just don't know that he's ever like i i don't know what he's doing um recreationally but not working um and it's not going to get this divorce so yeah well you think there's an inkling that he thinks he could get you back in the near future i know he says he's done but is could that be an ever even possibility no like i'm dating someone who's awesome and actually emotionally very available yes Um, you know, yeah. he's just like, a, he's a tall drink of water one. Like, I, w- and I told myself I was never going to date again. Like, I told myself I would not date again. And then this guy came into my life like eight months later. And I mean, he's amazing. 
that's how it happens i swear okay so but but here's the thing that i want to know and i know i saw comments like other people wanted to know this too now normally you date hot black guys so when you did first see matt were you like oh god this white guy but then you seemed into him well his lips were so soft so i will say this about matt Ooh, One he has very soft lips because he puts chapstick on constantly <laughs> He does have a chapstick addiction. He'll he'll say it to you. Like that's the one good thing about him. So I was like, woo! I actually have chemistry with a white guy. Like, okay, <laughs> we like this. I Wait, know. That's so funny. I'm so with you. I tell my husband he's the last white guy I'll ever be with. I, I mean, black men are so hot. And like the guy you're dating now. And then who was the guy from like season eight that, that people rumored? Will? I went on a date with Will. Um, yes, one- Will. Guess. But we, he and I decided, like, we were much, there's so, no chemistry. It was, like, much more friend chemistry. Okay. I mean, we still keep in touch and talk because he's, like, just such a nice guy. But, I mean, I I wasn't really trying to, like, date at that point either. And I don't think he really was. So we were just like, we can go on a date and it, it, just see, like, what happens. Um, okay, okay, how tall wait, how tall was Matt? Um, he, six nine ish. Six nine. Oh my yeah. god. Okay. Did he have a massive wang? I mean, like, I'm. T- I'm sorry. Uh, six nine. No, he didn't. I mean, he didn't. What? <laughs> I it, love it. I love it. I knew he was little. I knew it. Um, <laughs> that is some of his issues. Like, what's the insecurity there? Okay. Definitely. Uh, that explains. Now we've gotten to the root of it. I knew it. I said there. Okay, you would think like a basketball player, six nine, well hung. But I knew there was something off there, and that said, he's skinny. It's like yep, pencil I mean, dick. I hear you. It's just like it's very like I would say it's like similar to his body. Skinny but long, maybe like <laughs> skinny but long. Yes, you're you're giving a perfect picture of this. You yeah, know, maybe it's not for me personally. We only we probably had sex like maybe two, three times. What? Oh my god. Yeah, it wasn't much. Neither one of us like stayed. I mean, like he never was home, so like I was home alone a lot. Right. Uh, and when he was home, I wasn't trying to do it. So like, <laughs> yeah, you're trying to get away from him. Yeah, but, you weren't into it. No. <laughs> so you, okay, I'm curious too, what were some of the email responses? Because I've seen a lot of people do like these these one-off vloggers do videos about you. And you, you'd you mentioned this, that you like attract guys that aren't, you know, completely whole. What were a lot of the responses that women wrote to you or whatever? Did they really relate to your story? Did they criticize you a lot? I would say 85% of women were like, yeah, I dated a man. Like 85% of women, um, have dated a Matt or someone similar, like someone who's like narcissistic and doesn't value other people. And then I would say 5% were critical. They're like, why couldn't you just get over him like quick? And for me, it was like, I was really struggling with the idea of divorce, not necessarily struggling with like breaking up with him. So it was for in my head, a week three and on, I knew I was going to say no, but I was like having emotional breakdowns about getting divorced because I told myself I would never get divorced, but I knew it was going to happen. So I think that's why I was so emotional throughout the process is because I knew ugh, I had to get a divorce and that sucks because now I'm a divorcee, but <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a bigger story, right? You can say, well, yeah. I was on a TV show, you know, people will understand. So your new, your new boyfriend, the, the guy you're dating, hot. what was his take on that? Hot. Oh. Is he open to it? Um, so he's actually divorced and has kids. So he's older and he's like 34. I mean, he's not old, but he's older than like 28, 29. Um, right, right. He's, he's been through it. Uh, so for him, it, we both talked already about it. And we we're like, if we were to get married, we would just elope because we both have had the whole like craving. Thing. Right. And we're both at that place in our lives. We're just trying to, I mean, I feel like he and I are just on the same level as far as being chill, but knowing that this is a serious relationship. Amber, okay, so tell us too, like, would you ever go back to reality TV? Would you, are, is anybody courting you for a TV show? Because you were great on this. People were sucked in. There's still, I, we, AJ and I got tons of questions about you coming on. So give us the scoop. Are you going back? Um, Not at this point. Um, I would be down with certain ideas. I probably wouldn't go back for love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, found, I feel like I found my person. Um, but two, uh, finding love on, t- on TV is not as fun as it looks. <laughs> oh, it looks awful. I mean, when we talked to Amber and Barnett for Love at, at First Sight, uh, or not Love, it, uh, love is Blind, love is blind. <laughs> it was like, I don't even know if I could stick with it, like all the pre-process you had to do. I mean, yeah. that seems like so nuts. I, I don't know if I could have done it. 
Yeah, I know. I listened to that interview and I loved it, by the way. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> but no, like for me, uh, I would definitely be down with, you know, exploring other options. Maybe exploring single life, but not love life. Yep. I don't know. It's just that going on again for love is scary. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. It's so hard. Like when someone's got a camera in your face. I mean, as you know, love is hard enough. Like when there's no camera in your face, you're just trying to go out with somebody. It's so difficult. So right. forget that. By the way, I love that you listen to our interview. You know, you'd be good in porn, too. You are hot as well. And you you know what? You would make a Sarah, killing. She is a teacher. She is a teacher. Oh. She teaches the youth. <laughs> Oh, um, I totally forgot about that. I forgot. Amber's have the worst names, though, right? Like, oh, I forgot you're yes, a teacher. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of Amber's in porn. I have to say. Oh, that's yeah. true. I'm like, I, I always like look at my parents. I'm like, y'all gave me this name. <laughs> You'd be. But, so- you know, I don't feel like I don't. I am more of like I'm not. I don't wear makeup. Like I don't. I should, but it's more out of laziness. Like I will wear makeup if I'm seeing, um, like. Actually, no, I won't. No, I <laughs> You're gorgeous. I, you don't need it. Yeah, you don't need you, it. You really don't. And I mean, when you put on that little hot number, that dress, when you guys were about to sign the divorce papers, yes. I was like, damn, okay, okay. <laughs> she looks good without makeup and when she's dressed up. You looked really good. Thank you. That's so sweet. Um, no, that dress was on purpose because I was like, mm. <laughs> I need to- let me show off a little bit. <laughs> I need something because I, one, I'd seen him recently and I knew he was looking homeless. So I was like, let me like, Yes. So how he both the, I feel like his looks are now reflecting his personality. Yeah, is right. It is like a crazy transformation. Poor thing. I mean, if I, you are really a better sport than I am, because I would have shown up with a cardboard box and been like, Matt, move in. I mean, Put you know, in. yeah, I mean, <laughs> honest to God, I'm with you. He. OK, now who slid in your DMs now that you're famous? I mean, you have a lot of notoriety, over 100,000 followers on social media. People love you. Any celebrities slid into your DMs? I've had a few um, like football players, but they're still in college. I'm like oh. baby boys, baby boys, y'all. I can teach y'all. Like I can teach y'all. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but mostly, I would say mostly college athletes um, have tried it. But I'm like y'all, like 21. This isn't working for me. <laughs> Well, that's actually not bad. They can buy their own alcohol. Like I always say to AJ, I'm trying to get her to date somebody younger, although she's with a great guy. But I'm like, you can't date somebody 18. Then you got to buy them the white claws. Like at least at, at 21. No, wait, are you still teaching? Are you going to continue teaching? Um, I definitely want to teach at least another year. But I mean, I would, I've been seriously considering um, transitioning out of teaching just because of like, I want to be able to say so much more stuff. Like when I'm t- like on, like, for example, right now, it's like teaching is always in the back of my mind. And uh. I'm, like, I'm like a transparent person. So I have a hard time not just saying what I want to say. Girl, so. yeah, you need to you need to capitalize on all this fame, these hundred thousand social media followers. Then you can say what you want to say. I mean, honestly, we can trash Matt even more. Oh, I mean, I'll trash. I mean, like, I have nothing to hold back. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> how was you? it? How was it watching back when he called you clingy? Like watching back in those confessionals? Yeah. Was that annoying, or were you just like he's delusional? Well, my thing was, was like, I mean, if he were around me enough and called me that, I would be offended. But he like, spent like maybe outside of filming, he spent like twenty two minutes with me total. What the? F- <laughs> that is so, insane. How does so- he know I'm clingy? He hasn't been around me. <laughs> That is so frustrating to me. Amber, mm-hmm. tell us this too. What? Okay, your parents. Like, I know you've talked a little bit about your parents' dynamic because they're divorced, right? And your yes. mom is now a lesbian, right? Um, she started dating like a woman when I was around like six, oh, five, six. Wow. When I was really young, she moved to up north, and um, we live. We've always lived in North Carolina, but she moved to Boston, Massachusetts, and like pursued a relationship off of. She was like on chat rooms back in the day when chat rooms were a thing I met her wife or well, her girlfriend and moved up there and now she's married really so they're still together uh different woman different woman different, oh, woman. different woman okay got up there and then met someone else and then got married and how was that i mean is was that hard to reveal and talk about at all were you nervous about that or did you feel like i mean certainly so many people you know have families blended now but was that difficult it was so I will say the hardest time I've ever had to talk about it was in high school when my mom came to visit with her um, girlfriend slash wife. Mm. Awkward because everyone's like, why is your mom like kind of dressing manly and like with a woman? And like, y'all, she's a lesbian. <laughs> like, 
probably the hardest time I've ever had to reveal it. Um, and then once I got through that, it was like, if these like 15, 16 year olds can be cool about it. Then like, why can't everyone? Yeah. Um, and so after that, I'm pretty open with it. Got it. What was, what, so what was your mom and her wife's reaction to the show? And I mean, are they, you know, what did they say? Were they proud of you? Were they love, did they love seeing you on the show? Did they not have a comment? What did they think? My mom was kind of upset that like, I talked so much about my childhood. She's like, that's in the past. That's in the past. Oh, that does shape how I like am in relationships. Exactly. So she had a hard time with it. She's like, I left and it was for a good reason. I'm like, well, like we, it's a man, like we all are, agree or disagree on that point um and her, her head you know she left for the right reasons and she thought like i had a good life without her there and so she's like why would you complain like you had a good life i'm like but you always want your mom there yeah of course, of course. that's so crazy for her to think that you know that you she wasn't an essential part of your life right and but i mean in a way like it's just a conversation we've, we've had over and over since i was probably in middle school and i don't think we're ever going to come to an agreement about that so it just brought that back, I would say, more. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I thought that was brave for you to reveal that and talk about it. And, um, you know, because so many people can relate to it. And, and you just seem like you're very comfortable being transparent. I don't know if that's true, but it, it comes yeah. off that way, you know, that you really wear your emotions on your sleeve. Like, I feel uncomfortable when I can't be transparent. If I feel like I'm holding something in, I feel like a balloon. Like, I'm yeah. going to just blow up, like pop. <laughs> so I'm like, if I can just let things out, I will not pop. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> now, who is, is Matt dating anyone? I mean, we know he's couch surfing, you know, but is he dating anyone that we know of? Supposedly, he, well, on the show, uh, the Where Are They Now special, he said he was dating someone incredibly slowly. But then we were in LA and apparently the person he's dating is in North Carolina. So apparently oh. he was going to go cheat on her with some model. So who knows? How, how is Matt still getting, how I mean... <laughs> Yeah, like who, what IG model is DMing him and just being like, hey, let's meet up. I just, I would take one look at him and be like, he has no substance to offer. I mean, like, if y'all, I mean, like, I would have to be someone who has a high tolerance for boredom. Like, right. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it would have to be someone who can have a conversation with a wall. Because yeah. I couldn't do it. I wasn't good enough. <laughs> when you guys first started dating, or why you guys, when you first met him, really, he did seem like he wasn't talkative, but you said he would actually express feelings to you. Like I could see us together. I know why they matched us. But then in the reunions, I mean, he talks maybe three sentence, three word sentences. I, I just was like, what substance is there? Yeah. It's, so for him, it was like when he would start drinking. So he would a lot of times come over like right when filming was going to start. So right before producers and everyone got there, he would come in and then he would be drunk. So like, that's when he would say stuff. He'd be like, because I would be snarky. Because I would be honestly toward the end, I was such a bitch, and I, I'll own that. Right. I would do something snarky, and he'd be like, "But I see why we're we were paired together. I get it." And I'm like, "Oh, do you, Mr. Drunky? Like <laughs> <laughs> only talking now that you're drunk? You right. alcoholic? Get out of here! I <laughs> get, forget it. If you ever saw him talking, it was because he had definitely had a few drinks. Like he does not talk in real life. I don't know if it's because." He doesn't have anything to say or what? I, I say know. this. I say this about pro athletes on this show all Dry. the time. And AJ can attest to this. I've met so many, you know, major league baseball players. And honest to God, your carpet has more personality. I mean, it's like, it's something with athletes. They're gifted, on, you know, in whatever profession they're in, but they have Zippo personality. Why? That is so true, though. Um, yes. I, I personally don't like to date athletes that weren't like maybe college athletes. And then now they're retired and old but right. like i don't want to date someone who's currently participating in sports because they are boring and they have this complex like uh one they're untouchable or like they can do whatever they want like i have never been attracted to current athletes yeah no i get it I, i'm totally with you um amber people also wanted to know about your tattoo is it oh, I, I actually had somebody that messaged aj and me and wanted to know if it was real I have seven real ones. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. Do you do you regularly go get more? Um, so I got a bunch when I was like twenty one. Love and it. I Freedom. Got four when I was twenty one, and then I got this one re the most. Wait, this reverse. I got a pineapple like most recently. There yep. it is. Yeah, love it. And that was all about like it was right after the show, and it was about you know you can still be tough but be sweet. And like that was a balance I, I've always struggled with because I really want to do what's best for others and be kind to others. But sometimes you do have to have like your prickles, your spiny pieces out and protect yourself. Yeah. Um, 
And then I got two finger tattoos like mm, a year ago. And it was like a Bible verse that says like, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow worries about itself. And it like, as someone who like worries a lot, I'm like, yeah, I look I'm like, don't worry, girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're seriously the cutest. So, okay, yeah, you're any, amazing. Any more, any more tattoos in the future? Um, yeah, I'm actually gonna get one in June. Um, it's gonna be a tulip because my best friend is a rose and I'm a tulip, and so we're gonna get them together. <laughs> <laughs> that's very cute. I've I've been trying to get one, but I feel like I need to draw it and I need to have someone that's good at doing tattoos, and then I just like lose all interest. I'm like, okay, it takes planning, right? You don't want to get it to, by somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, the girl that I'm going to like, we had to book her like last June. And she is not getting us until this June. And what? Yes, like that, that's how I booked out. She she was on Ink Master. Um, oh, oh, I love. Okay, little little cross paths of TV okay. shows. Yeah, so she and I all have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Seriously. So. Oh my god. Well, Amber, you've been amazing. I mean, I, I'm so curious to see. Do you think that a lot of the interest is gonna, you know, because you guys ended the season what this past fall? Yes, we've been in September of like 2019. Are you looking forward to it dying down? Or like you said, are you kind of working on your plan to maybe get out of teaching, capitalize on this? Um, so in a, I don't know what I'm looking forward to because I, sometimes I think, you know, it would be because when I'm out with my boyfriend, a lot of people come up to us and they'll be like, you dated the worst guy. And he's just you know standing there listening like, <laughs> <laughs> wow, you dated a really bad guy. <laughs> and then um, so it's, awkward. it's I don't think he thinks it's awkward, but for me, it is a little awkward. But at the same time, I love it. And I love people. So if I could just keep working with people, regardless of what I do, I think I'd be happy. Oh, it's so good. Well, Amber, we like love that you like popped on here and and that we were able to interview you and get an update. It's great that you'll be divorced, regardless of whether Matt signs or not. Seriously. Yeah. Are y'all gonna have a divorce party? Yes. Divorce party, net definitely have a divorce party. Okay. Oh, yeah. Are you gonna do like a Zoom divorce party in the meantime? Cause we wanna come. Yes. I will do a uh, some virtual it's a lie as soon as the process i'll have to like make a big virtual party okay us and kevin frazier i mean you know we're okay. all there you know i mean <laughs> tried real hard for me guys Trevin, kevin tried it <laughs> he did he was good he kept like okay let's just bring out the papers bring out the papers <laughs> i know get he a pen was good he was good he was, he was rallying for you bring out a- i stormed off i was like he's an ignorant liar and i like stormed off um, and Kevin followed me out and he was like, he is an ignorant liar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was defending. You. Okay. I love that. I love that. And I he was like, are you okay? Are you mad at me? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not mad at you. I'm just mad that that loser won't sign the papers. And he kept saying he wasn't going to sign them until we got back in North Carolina. And I was like, you can't take 10 minutes to sign them now. Like we could go off stage and you can read them. It's like a page long. Um, so that was why I think I stormed off, but well, it's frustrating yeah. because you're just like, I made it easy for you, Matt. Here's the papers. Sign them. Mm-hmm. And let's move on. Uh, well, literally. hopefully he finds a new couch to sleep on. <laughs> yeah. now, are you guys still following each other on Instagram or social media or unfollowed? He blocked me like the day we finished filming. Oh. So whenever I called him out for cheating, he blocked Petty. But I was so happy he did because then I didn't have to see any of his stuff pop up or whatever. Oh, that's Yeah, so that's always nice. Yeah, absolutely. And well, that helps to just get over with it. God, I right. hope they were having a meeting at Married at First Sight, like all their therapists and everything going, okay, uh, maybe we need to reevaluate our... Uh... <laughs> assess the test. Yeah, yeah assess the test. <laughs> I think it's going to just... I don't even know how you like can tell the sociopath is... I mean, you know, how do you tell them, you know? I'm surprised that he tricked everyone into getting on the show, considering he has no personality. I know. Well, he must have been drinking during that whole process. <laughs> yeah. he, he, like, he got hammered. He was like, you know what? Basketball um, career isn't working. Let's go on this show. I got this. <laughs> it's great. I tried to go on Temptation Island like shortly after we finished airing. Oh, um, that, that would have been. I'm like, boy, sign the paperwork. You, you can go on Temptation Island. Yeah, yeah exactly. That would have been so good. Oh, he'd be good at that. He'd be uh, too hot to handle as well. That new he one was, on Netflix. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah. He would be the worst, but yeah. fun to watch. More like too homeless <laughs> to handle, but you know, regardless, it's like well, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. That would be really good, actually. I'd be. Into it. <laughs> I would watch. I'm hot. I'm homeless. Who wants to date me? No, <laughs> Let me go on their couch. Oh my god, poor guy. Oh god. Um, look, Amber, we're obsessed with you. Where can people follow you? Where can they find you? Are you got anything you want to promote? Because we we want to get it out there. Um, no, I, I just have Instagram. I'm kind of like one of those old people who 
are really bad at uh, social media, but I love Instagram. So at a bowl for life, like uh, my last name is bowls and I, everyone always called me a bowl growing up. So that's where that came <laughs> from. But <laughs> got it. And then I also saw you have a cameo, right? Oh, I do have a cameo. Yeah. Boom. That's fun. They're super fun, right? Yeah. yeah. So if y'all want to like, I'll some crazy stuff. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> and that one, they can find it on your Instagram, right? The link? Yeah. Great. Okay. Awesome. Amber, love you, girl. Thank you so much. I will keep listening. Y'all are fun. Ah, yes. Yes. Amber, Thank love you. you. Bye. See ya. Bye. Cast by Brock. Cast by Brock.